This video is a follow-on to my portfolio variance video where I showed you how to calculate the portfolio variance of a group of stocks, these stocks. And if you haven't watched that, you might want to watch that before you watch this one. But in this video, we're going to see if we can find the optimal weights to invest in these stocks. Okay, so to get started, right, we're going to start the same way as I did in the variance video, but I am going to now uh, import SciPy Optimize. Okay, once we get our environment set up, I'm going to go ahead and right, make a variable, store the stocks in there, go ahead and download about a year's worth of data as of this video, display some of that, okay, calculate the returns, okay, daily returns there using the instantaneous rate of return. And then uh, we're gonna need the covariance so we can eventually get the portfolio variance. Okay, so all this stuff I covered in that other video. And so I'm not gonna talk too much about it here. Uh, something I didn't do in the other video, well, I did set weights, but I didn't calculate an expected return on any of the stocks. And there's lots of ways to calculate expected return. I'm just gonna use historical return. And okay, the downside of that is we're expecting the stock's performance in the past, this past year, to continue into the future. All right, so you may not wanna use this, but Okay, I have the data, so that's how I'm going to calculate it. Okay, so this is what we get there. All right, so, uh, you know, some of this stuff doesn't look too out of line. Uh, I don't think we're going to expect NVIDIA to more than double again uh, this coming year, but it's always possible. All right, at least we have some kind of basis for, okay, where did these returns come from? that we're going to be using. All right, next thing I'm going to do is set some initial weights. And, you know, based on these returns, uh, probably heavily weight it towards uh, NVIDIA. Okay, so this just sort of gives us a starting place. And so then when we actually run the optimization algorithm, we have something to compare the results there with. Okay, so our metrics, right, I can get an expected return of the portfolio. And to calculate this, I'm going to use the NumPy weighted average function here uh, and use my expected returns. All right, multiplied by the weights. Okay, we can get the variance or the standard deviation. Again, we're going to use the weighted average function here. I transpose the weights and then we're going to multiply it by this matrix result. Okay, and then, okay, we can measure the portfolio performance a bunch of different ways. I'm going to use the sharp ratio, right, which is pretty well accepted as, oh, how much return do you get per unit of risk? Okay, so we'll just take our expected return here and Right, we'll adjust it for the risk-free rate, the 90-day T-bill in this case, and then we'll divide it by the uh, standard deviation. Okay, so I pre-formatted some outputs there, and uh, let's see what we get from a baseline perspective. All right, the expected return, 61%. I'd love to see that. Uh, volatility is, that's the variance. So I need the square root there. Okay, let's uh, take a look at that. Okay, so that's more like it. Uh, volatility, about 23%. And then, all right, we, we get basically two percentage, two and a half percent points of return for every uh, percent unit of risk we're taking. Okay, so that's what we have at a baseline. So uh, now we're ready to move on after all these preliminaries and see if we can go ahead and uh, use the optimization algorithm. And uh, for all the algorithms in SciPy, you're gonna need to define some function to minimize, all right? And they, they don't have a maximize function, but uh, if you minimize a negative version of whatever it is you're trying to maximize, uh, it has the same effect. All right, so that's what we're gonna be doing here. So I'm going to be minimizing the negative sharp ratio to see if I can get something uh, better than 2.48, okay? All right, so I'm gonna write a function here. I'm gonna get those portfolio metrics. I'm gonna use this and then feed it into the optimization algorithm, all right? So I have to pass in the weights and then, all right, define some parameters in here. We'll get the risk-free rate, 
all right and then I'll calculate uh, the uh, stock returns all right same way I did outside there Okay, we'll get an overall expected return, and we will get the uh, standard deviation, and finally the sharp. Okay, we'll return all that. Okay, so now uh, I'm gonna I'm actually gonna feed this into a, another function where I am gonna minimize the negative sharp ratio. Right, so I can just call that something like this. Right, I'm gonna pass in those same weights, and all I'm gonna do here is return the negative of that sharp ratio. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna feed into the optimization algorithm to minimize. I, I need to sort of check that everything uh, sums up to one. The, I want the weights to sum to one. So I'll just define a function, call it checksum, again based on those weights. And we're just going to return to check if it's one. We want to take the sum of those weights minus one. All right, so it actually checks to see if the value here is zero. Okay, so these are the functions I'm going to use to run the uh, optimization algorithm. And so uh, beyond that, we're going to have to set some constraints for the algorithm. All right, so I'm going to set some bounds there. And we don't want them to be uh, less than zero or greater than one. So I'm going to do a little list comprehension here and set the bounds at zero and one. Okay, we can take a look at what that looks like. And then I'm going to set uh, the constraints parameter that actually is used by the algorithm. Okay, and it likes a dictionary. Tell it a type equal. All right, so this could be less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, right? Uh, this is where it's going to use the check sum function. All right, so it's going to actually set it equal to zero. And I have to tell it what's the function to use. Okay, so we can, before we run the optimizer, make sure that all our functions are sort of working the way we expect them to. So I could print off the portfolio metrics, passing in those weights. And, okay, so we're getting that 61.7, 22.9, 2.47. And then we can just kind of confirm that, oh yeah, that's what I got when I calculated them separately. So that looks like it's working. All right, I'm pretty confident that since this worked, that the negative version of that sharp ratio, which is the index two of this tuple output, right, zero, one, two. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that that's going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and then optimize it. Okay, and I'm going to use the min sharp as the objective function here. I'm going to start with those initial weights. Okay, run that, and then there's a lot of output in there, and so I'll leave it up to you to go ahead and in there and explore it. Uh, one of the outputs is x, right? And so these are the, the values of the x variables, and so I'm going to ask for those, and uh, I'm going to round them off. Otherwise, we'll get some kind of scientific notation that's not that readable, so let's take a look at that. All right, and so according to the sequential least squares of programming, uh, we should not invest in Apple or Amazon. We should put 11% in Eli Lilly, 16% in NVIDIA, and the bulk of the portfolio should be invested in S&P 500, so somewhat different than those arbitrary weights that I set uh, up above here. All right, and you can run it with different kind of parameters in there. If you want to make sure that you're investing some in all the stocks, uh, you can set the bounds at something like, you know, 5%, 1%, whatever you want. All right, I'm going to leave it up to you to explore this a little bit more in detail. Uh, what else can we get here? Let's get some revised portfolio metrics. All right, so I'll just call that portfolio metrics function. And instead of passing in my initial weights, I'm going to pass in these optimized weights and see uh, how different the optimal solution is uh, from, the, from the baseline. Okay, so we can see that our expected return went down quite a bit. All right, our volatility also went down quite a bit. All right, and then our sharp ratio went up quite a bit. All right, so from 2.0. 
2.48 to 2.62. All right, and we lost about five, six points of uh, volatility to go along with our 12 points of return. Okay, so I hope that helps you get started with uh, portfolio optimization.